Hey everybody, welcome into the spread, Nesson.com Football Picks Podcast. It is uh, week seven. Uh, we are into the seventh week of the, the NFL season. Uh, we are back once again to make our against the spread picks for the best games on the slate, uh, as well as do some uh, some other odds and ends in the NFL betting world. I'm Nesson.com's Mike Cole, joined as always by Ricky Doyle on my right and Andre Kachatorian on my left. Uh, whose beard is coming in quite it's nicely. Very bad. Looking so is very this Stanley Cup Up top, beard. you're doing pretty well, too. Yeah. You're, you're very I'm starting cyclical. to look like a 1960s, uh, you know, hippie? Is that what they call it? Good job. You're I like was going to say. Woodstock uh, Netflix w- documentary. W- Woodstock. <laughs> I, yeah. I was motivated. I don't want to say anything problematic. I was just going to say. I, I, no, I, but I'm not going to do it. I'll, I'll tell you later. <laughs> <laughs> right, go ahead. You look, you, look, you look good. Nobody <laughs> fluctuates. Uh, with hairstyles and such more than yeah. you do, it's 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 impressive. Anyway, uh, we uh, as I mentioned, we'll we'll make our against the spread picks for some of the best games this weekend. Uh, we'll do the three best games. We'll do locks and upsets as well. Uh, but before we do that, uh, before we can move forward, we must look back and see what lessons we can yeah, learn. Yeah, last Bob week we didn't right. even look back at the record. Yeah, that's right. So we so actually this week we, we will. Have to. And Mike, I'm more than li- more than happy to do that. Eleven and three. Wow, I haven't seen a week like this in a long time. Ricky nine and five, and I even went eight and six. Uh, we're doing great so far this season, guys. Which is actually, and I want to point this out too. We went thirteen and two collectively with our picks on the spread, and even that's a little misleading considering I'm not counting Ricky's lock pick as a win there despite covering so really if you want to go strictly against the spread we were 14 and one last week so i think that's a pretty sharp week for us yeah. for us all to do very well on a week where uh the you know the public might have taken a bath underdogs were 10 and 4 against the spread last week uh, uh a lot it, of backdoor coverage yeah there was yeah. it's true uh, t- the the dogs are on a uh, they're running they are running in a, in a big ass pack this year 53 36 and 2 against the spread uh, against the season, for the season so far, our underdogs, uh, road teams went eight and six against the spread last week. They are uh, twenty three games over five hundred against the spread for the season as well. So, uh, you it's know, uh, that's got to even out at some like, point. But you, you did a little bit of an exercise last week where you you dug up our our records. Yes, broken down by team. Correct. Yeah. Which uh, you know, I don't know how how much we can deduced from that, but I found it interesting, if nothing else. Yeah, I don't think a whole lot. Yeah, uh, but it, it is, it's interesting to see which teams where each of us is good at picking, yes. which teams each of us is bad at picking. I would also like to see at some point, and I'm not going to give you a homework assignment, <laughs> but, I would like be, but I'd be interested to see how we fare in the early afternoon games versus the late afternoon games. I would because tell I you that like I'm I shooting like 80% from the floor <laughs> in, in the 1 o'clock games, and then I you. can't buy a bucket yeah, late. I, 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 I was 8-2 and two at some point. There was a point on Sunday, I think I told you this, I was convinced I was going to go perfect from Thursday night through the 1 o'clock games, and then Cincinnati had a late backdoor cover. That was good for me. Uh, but, Bad yeah, for you. but I knew it was going to go sideways as soon as those late games started. Yeah. I don't know what it is. It's Because I, I, I always feel good How about, about the Dolphins? things. Yeah. That, that worked out well for all of us. Yeah, that's true. Dolphins. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's you know, true. It, that's it, it. It's kind of demoralizing, too, because that's when your Sunday really starts to go south. It's yeah. like, oh, the four o'clock game yep. is starting. Weekend's over. Yeah. I'm getting my ass handed to me. If you this is like, if you maybe had a little a drink, anxiety. you just start to feel like that yeah, haze of like, ah, oh, damn it. This yeah, is it's gonna... tough. All right. Anyway, I'm start going to bed at like three o'clock in the afternoon. That's so a good idea. Mitigate that. Now, <laughs> now you're talking. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. Let's 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 start picking some games. Uh, Sunday afternoon, uh, week seven. We have the uh, AFC. South matchup. This is a huge game for play out with playoff implications. Uh, two teams that are playing real well. Both uh, two teams uh, in their last each each of their last games beat the Kansas City Chiefs. Okay. How is that possible, you ask? Well, the Indianapolis Colts, who are host, hosting the Houston Texans, are coming off their bye. Uh, Houston is going to Indianapolis after going uh, to up to Kansas City last week and knocking off the Chiefs. A game I think that we were all very much on. So yeah, good, yeah. good job by us. Uh, but the Colts, as it stands right now, are one-point favorites. I think they opened at one and a half, down to one. Houston is getting a lot of the public action so far, about three-fifths of the tickets. Uh, total set at 48 here. Uh, big game, big, big game. Ricky, who do you got? Yeah, this is uh, a lot of love for the Texans coming yes. out of that Chiefs game. Yeah. Uh, understandably right so, I guess. Right um, yeah. But if there's one thing I've learned in this NFL season, it's just when you think you have everything figured out, <laughs> you really don't. No. Uh, no and this, to me, smells like a little bit of a letdown game for the Texans. Um, it, it's, 
there's a lot to, a lot going on in Houston's favor as well. So I, I hemmed an odd over it a little bit. But I just look at the, the Colts coming off the bye week, a much needed bye week too, because they got some key players that uh, you really use that Darius that Leonard. Rest. Darius Leonard being chief among them. Um, at home, it, Texans in the second leg of a back uh, back to back road games. After that, you know the first one over the the Chiefs. I think the Chiefs really shot themselves in the foot in that game, especially at the end of the first half with that uh, the costly fumble that led to points for Houston. This is a must win for the the Colts to to stay at the top and in, in sort of and sort of try to compete for that division title. So it just seems like based on the spread, based on the, just the public perception. They're sort of trying to bait you into taking the Texans here. I'm going to take Indianapolis. I don't expect either team to control the line of scrimmage like they did against the Chiefs. I mean, the Chiefs have just had the ball jammed down their throat time and time again. These yeah. two teams did it uh, the last two weeks. But I do think when it comes to the battle in the trenches, I think Indianapolis still has a little bit of an advantage there. The Texans sort of middle of the pack against the run. Colts are very good at run blocking, number two ranked according to pro football focus. So I can see an instance where Mylon Mack rushes for over 100 yards. Um, maybe a, a conservative game plan on the part of Indianapolis, but I do think they will have some offensive success. So, uh, lay the one point. What was the spread you said? One point? One, yeah. Basically. At one. It's so basically a pick. Yeah. I, I, I like that. I'll take the Colts, uh, even though Houston is uh, pretty hot right now. I'm going to take the Texans. Last week I came out here and talked about Deshaun Watson's release time uh, and how he wasn't sacked in week five. First four weeks of the season, Deshaun Watson's average release time was 2.92. He was sacked more than any other quarterback in the league. Week five brought that down to 2.43, which is a half second less than that average. And last week against the Chiefs, 2.61, which is still lower than that average. And again, he wasn't sacked again. So I, I think when Deshaun Watson is kept clean, he's one of the best quarterbacks in the league. He's been showing it the last couple of weeks. And I, 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 you know, I, I think we're going to keep seeing that. I think Watson's made adjustments, and we're going to keep seeing that this week against the Colts. Colts have the fourth worst yards per play differential in the league. This is a team, let's not forget, they lost to the Raiders. I yeah. Mean, yeah, they beat the Chiefs, but they also lost to the Raiders. So I don't know what we're seeing from this Colts team. Um, that, was a, that was a weird game. It, it was a weird game, but the, the Colts That's participated true. in a lot of weird games. Colts, uh, I will point out, yeah, so they, the they're, they're, two, <laughs> they're two home games this year. They've lost to the Raiders, and they just barely squeaked by... Uh, the Falcons. So that's right. something to keep in mind. It's weird. I don't know. And um, Texans also allow uh, the Texans allow the most receiving yards to running backs. Uh, but Marlon Mack only seven catches this year, which is basically one catch per game. He's not really utilized in the passing game. Uh, I I think the Texans. It'll be a close game, but I think they win this one. What about? Uh, <laughs> uh, it could be a big game for Naheem Hines then. Who's actually been fantastic yeah. over the backfield? Could be. Uh, it sounds like you're leaning Colts. I am leaning Colts. Yeah, I'll take the Colts as well. I think this one actually might get ugly. Uh, I think <coughs> uh, Frank Reich is I, one thing I like to really look at recently. Has been coaching. I think Frank Reich is a much much better coach than uh, Bill O'Brien, or at least he's he's done more with less since he's been there. Uh, then, you know, obviously O'Brien's got a lot of uh, disappointing results over the course of his career. But I do think this is kind of noteworthy. Uh, you know, you don't want to go too far down the trends list, but Indianapolis six and two in the division, seven and three at home, straight up under uh, Reich since the start of last season. And with this being a minus one spread, uh, you might as well be a pick 'em. So I like the straight up there. And I think Indianapolis, much more disciplined team. They have the fewest penalty yards per game this season. Uh, and I do like the, you know, that some I pick and choose where I, <laughs> I like certain things. But I, I do like the Colts being the healthier team, the rest of the team here. You look at Houston lost uh, first round pick Titus Howard, one of their offensive tackles, who's actually been one of their better pass protectors this they season. They still did well with that. No, I know, but this was again. I think you look at the the strength of schedule, strength of uh, opponent. You know, Houston's looked really good. That offensive line's looked really good against Kansas City and Atlanta. And sure, you know, going into Kansas City is a tough spot. Uh, and, you know, communication's more difficult playing at Arrowhead and things like that. But Atlanta, they are no great shakes when it comes to the pass rush. You know, Kansas City's Indianapolis middle of the pack. Like, you know, they're, they're at middle of the road. Okay. Pass yeah, I mean, sure, sure. I think they have a, a pretty decisive advantage, though, on both sides of the ball in the trenches. So I think that that kind of plays itself out. Uh, it sounds like... You're sounding like Dwight Freeney's going to come back from the dead uh, and... well. Uh, I, I mean, we're what? Pressure. We're, we're how that many? spin move you used to do from the edge? <laughs> that would be delightful if he came back. <laughs> but we're, let's see here. How many weeks of removed are we from, you know, uh, I'm looking it up right now. Sorry, this is not great. Well, uh, no, how, like, so week one uh, against New Orleans, what was it, six sacks for Deshaun Watson? I think there was like another six sack game in there. So the we're Panthers. not, 
We're not. Oh, the Panthers, I think, is a six sack. Yeah. yeah. It's a, it's a three Legit weeks pass rush. Right. So we're not far off from that. Rush. Like, it's, it's been a while. Or it hasn't been that long since that happened. Uh, also, Houston will be out, be without uh, cornerback Bradley Roby, who is uh, out with a hamstring injury. He's been their best corner this season. Jonathan Joseph already dealing with uh, an issue of his own. That's not great news when you're going up against T.Y. Hilton and company, although it sounds like Paris Campbell is kind of up in the air. Uh, let's see anything else. Oh, I just think, you know, I like the spot getting Indianapolis here because I think a lot of people are going to be high in Houston yeah. uh, coming off of that win. And there is, you can't discredit a team when they go in and beat a Super Bowl contender on the road. But, you know, you kind of look at things like, you know, the uh, Kansas City what offensive these line. Teams be the Super Bowl contender. That's not what I'm no, I, looking yeah, at. Yeah, sure. Just, but like I think Deshaun Watson has made key adjustments in his passing I, game. I think they've and had it's a, shown. No sacks in the last is, two games. And he was sacked more than anyone else. Sure. In the first four I weeks. just think matchup wise, this is their toughest game in the last few weeks. That's happened to coincide with that improvement. And you, know, you look at Kansas City last week. What were they? They were down an offensive lineman, and they lose one in the middle of that game as well. You know, you look at that, you know, that fluky interception that came on a you know ball that Mahomes thought was a penalty. So it's just I don't know. I don't want to totally discredit Houston. I just like the the matchup here for Indianapolis. I, just, I, I think it, some things with Houston are a little misleading. Yeah, for, I mean, based on the competition that you mentioned, particularly with, with regards to the pass rush, and also I mean I saw somebody point out the Texans have gone four straight games without allowing uh, the opponent to rush for a hundred yards. But you consider that the the Chiefs don't have much of a rushing attack to begin with. They played the Falcons in a shootout, so that sort of just eliminated the run altogether. And then Christian McCaffrey in the game, the loss of the Panthers ran for 93 yards. Whoops, sorry, didn't crack the, the century mark. And he also added 10 catches for 86 yards. I was going to say, he's probably... And then the Chargers, and that happened to be somewhat of a fluky game. So I just think that, I think the Colts are going to run the ball, and I think they're going to run it effectively. Yeah. It's, I, I look forward to that game. That is, a, uh, that is a football matchup I will be paying attention to this weekend. So. All right. Colts need the, that one too. The yeah, one. they do. They're, they're screwed if they don't. They do. Seahawks, Ravens. This is a good one too. I uh, will be paying attention to this, and uh, considering this is a this. Uh, considering it's a four twenty five game, uh, take that into consideration because unofficially we are horrible at picking late afternoon games. But uh, the Ravens coming off of uh, a win against Cincinnati in which they looked okay, uh, the Bengals got in the back door there. Uh, they go to Seattle, take on the Seahawks. Seahawks coming off a win at Cleveland, an impressive win that I think we all were on as well. So. Uh, keep that in mind as well. Um, Seahawks three and a half point favorites right now. Uh, public's about 50-50 on this. The total set at 50 and a half. Uh, some shootout potential here. Andre, who do you like? I like the Seahawks. Uh, Ravens okay. haven't beat anybody this <laughs> that year. That was it. Yeah. Yeah. All right, moving <laughs> Ravens on. Ravens haven't beat anyone this year. Dolphins. They haven't. Cardinals. So Bengals. This th- seems like Steelers a league wide backup. Thing. Yeah, that's true. Like the, the discrepancy between the good teams and the bad teams is. Pretty wild. Seahawks like, have beat people this year. But I feel like there's so many teams I look at and I'm like, I can't figure out how good they are because they've beaten That's absolute the thing, trash. Not to, I mean, if you're playing the spread drinking game, take a drink now that I'm going to mention the Packers. But like, that's the thing. I look at the Packers. They're five and one. I don't think they're very good, but they've also yeah. beat good teams. So it's like, how, I, who knows? You know, we don't know anything. We're six weeks into this thing. We don't know anything. I mean, I could say at least Seattle. They went into. Um, so I will say the, the uh, da, 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 da. Baltimore's four wins have come against com- opponents with a combined record of three eighteen and one. Yeah, that's, that's bad. That's bad. And um, okay, Seahawks. I like the Seahawks. Both of these teams love to run the ball. It's going to be a lot of... This game might be over in two hours. Yeah, it's yeah. a very quick game. But the Seahawks also have the best player in the field. Russell Wilson, unbelievable year. 14 touchdowns, no picks. Um, Seahawks also have the very good turnover differential, plus six turnover differential. Again, no picks. Um, going up against Lamar Jackson, he's prone to make some mistakes, especially lately. And Russell Wilson, when he's been kept clean, the Ravens really haven't had a... Um, We've only had 11 sacks this year, despite blitzing 36% of the time, which is the second highest blitz rate in the league. Whoa! But they still <laughs> only have 11 sacks. <laughs> I forgot what I was to say. Oh, <laughs> sorry. So I don't see a lot of pressure on Wilson. Um, and when he's not pressured, the guy has 129 passer reading, which is the best in the league. Uh, and the Ravens yeah, also allowed the, uh, the third most yards per play, 6.3 yards per play. This is going to be, I think this will be a blowout, actually. I wow. think Seattle's going to run away with this one. Um, and, you know, both teams, you know, Baltimore's going to have to for, l- throw the ball in this game. And, uh, again, I still don't trust Lamar Jackson. It's, it's one thing when he's throwing 90-yard touchdowns to Hollywood Brown against the Dolphins. But this <laughs> is a different situation on the road at Seattle. These teams seem kind of similar to me. Yeah. I mean, it, it almost feels to me like the Ravens are a, a poor man's version of the Seahawks or, or you know, a watered-down version. Um, I agree. 
that said, I'm taking the Ravens because I don't. It's st- I don't think the the Ravens are gonna win this outright, but I like them getting points. I yeah. in general when the Ravens are getting points, I, for whatever reason, I just really like them in that underdog role. Five and one against the spread in their last six as a road underdog. There you go. The numbers back it up, and it also just from a just. An eye test, you know what I mean? Like, I just feel better about backing them when I, they're getting you points. You almost feel better getting points on the road than them at home. Like, you go back to the yeah. Arizona game in week two, and they kind of were eh. Last week against Cincinnati, they, they failed to shut the back door. So And, and see, the, the thing here is, like I said, I think, I think the Seahawks are the better team, but I do think they have enough problems defensively yeah. um, for the Ravens to keep this close. You, you, mean, you mentioned the Ravens not having much of a pass rush. The Seahawks don't either. I mean, they're getting Jaron Reed back from a suspension, but mm. um, they've had some problems uh, That's a big one. putting pressure on the opposing quarterback. Uh, their tackling's been a little bit of a problem. So, I don't know, if they start slow like they did uh, this past week against the Browns, and I think the Ravens obviously have the potential to keep it within the number. Also some problems along that uh, offensive line for Seattle. Dwayne Brown, DJ Fluker, both battling some injuries. I don't know what their status is going to be come Sunday. Um, so, yeah, this is a game where both teams are going to try to establish the run, and I just think the Ravens keep it close. I, just one more point to, to strengthen yours is sure. Rams. Any, anytime you want to do that. What am I taking the Rams? The Seahawks and their <laughs> and, uh, sure. four wins. Four of their wins have been decided by four points or less. There's a lot of close games. That's the thing. I can totally see this being a situation where it's it's tied Cover, or yeah, the Ravens well, have a slight lead late. Russell Wilson drives them down. They don't, they don't get over that number. First note on my uh, notes, four of uh, Seattle's wins have been by four points or fewer this yeah. year. <laughs> there you go. So, Sorry, this Andre steals steal my thunder. thunder. Take a drink. Uh, um, <laughs> I also like Baltimore. I'll take the points uh, for one of those reasons. Uh, Ricky, kind of to one of the points that you made as well, uh, slow starts kind of been a, a little bit of an issue for Seattle uh, here and there. Baltimore also has the number two first half offense. Um, they're scoring the second most points per first. That's always a hard one to explain. Yeah. They're good in the first half. Uh, and then if you get ahead early, they'll have, they have a really good chance of killing the clock. The number one time possession team in the NFL. And uh, only six teams have allowed more first half points this season than Seattle. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Uh, maybe you know, sprinkle a little action on the first half line. Uh, I also like that Seattle's allowing 12 yards per reception uh, and three touchdowns to tight ends this year. Mark Andrews Andrews has been Lamar Jackson's top targeted receiver. He's gotten seven targets at least in each game this season for Baltimore. Uh, I also, you know, per pro pro football focus, Seattle is the 29th ranked tackling team. Ricky kind of mentioned that. Uh, Only Leonard Fournette has more yards after contact per rush than Mark Ingram this season. So I think there's some chance there for Mark Ingram to break a run or two and maybe take some pressure off of Lamar Jackson, maybe uh, keep him from trying to overdo it himself and, and risk himself for getting hurt. But Seattle also allowing 6.2 yards per carry to quarterbacks this season as well. So Mayfield had 35 yards last week at a 15-yard run, I think it was. So, he, you know, there's going to be some chances for, uh, I think, Jackson to run wild as well. So, uh, Oh, and one last thing, special teams. You know, you don't want to sleep on special teams. Uh, Baltimore has the second-best punt return unit in the NFL, whereas uh, Seattle has allowed a punt return for a touchdown this year, and they also are allowing the third most yards per kick return. So that's something that you never know. You know, you take it wherever you can get it in terms of field position, and obviously Justin Tucker, uh, pretty good kicker. It's very close to doing one of my, uh, speaking of drinking game, uh, one of my, you know, switching my pick in the middle of the show. Uh, <laughs> but I just think that... <laughs> that would be one of them. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to stick with the Seahawks. Okay. I, I think Lamar Jackson throws two or three picks in this game, and it, it just... It's I Seattle, can see that Seattle happen. Yeah. Storm, and they don't turn the ball over. I think that's... Uh, at the end of the I, day, it comes down to that. You know what? Turnover differential is huge. I am concerned about that. That half point seems like it's there, trying to bait me into taking uh, Baltimore. Like... You know what I mean? What is that? Yeah. Remember that stat from a couple years yeah, ago? Yeah, like teams that, that had three that, and a half points. That basically, like you're you're stared away by the three, the right. the half point. When in reality, you're you're more apt to if you pick the favorite by three and a half points win. They're more apt to cover than if you were to take them at two and a half or yeah. three or whatever. Right. The it was. cover I, rate for three and a half is almost better than yeah, three. Yeah, it's or better something. than you yeah. think. So all right. <laughs> That in mind, we almost had a triple switch there. Ricky and I kind of talking ourselves out of our own pick. <laughs> you got, yeah, you want to trade? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Cool>. <laughs> anyway, Sunday night, uh, NFC East, great. What it's else a is huge new? Huge game. Yeah, whoop de do. I do hate the it's NFC. It's like the East. same way you hate California. You hate the NFC East. That I don't hate Mike California. Hates. I don't know. Only parts of California. Wherever you're, you're opening that can of worms again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Philly uh, at Dallas. Cowboys three point favorites here. 
both teams. This is a tough one. I don't know if you guys struggled this one as it's much. Very as I tough. Did. Injuries abound. Iron yeah. Smith yeah. injury is killing me. Well, there's that. There's Amari Cooper. Uh, Jason Peters got dinged up. Niles Bradham. We don't know if uh, Deshaun <laughs> Jackson's back. Uh, Ronald Darby, Vontae Ma- Maddox, yeah. like it goes on and on. Randall Cobb, uh, you know, I don't, it's a mash unit for both teams, so I guess that kind of evens the playing field. But the Cowboys are three point favorites coming off their loss to the Jets. Uh, Philly got run out of the building in Minnesota last week, but this is a huge game uh, in terms of NFC East uh, standings. 60 to 70 percent of the money right now, or excuse me, the tickets are on Philly. Uh, the total set at 48 and a half. Ricky, who do you like here? So, with all the the injuries that you mentioned, I'm sort of banking on the Cowboys being at full health here because, I, which is a, a little bit of a risk. Yeah. Um, because I do think if they get their both their starting tackles back and that offensive line is fully healthy, that that ultimately is the difference yeah. in this game. Um, it, you know, we've seen what they're able to do when they're able to establish the run. And I just think the Eagles, too, I don't know if they're, their injury, I mean, their, their problems aren't injury specific. I mean, they've got problems without injuries. Their secondary is bad before. Their secondary, which we, I mean, we talked about last week going into that game, was going to be one way in which the Vikings could win and cover the spread. And it just played out exactly how we, how we saw it happening. Um, it's just some things to note here. Eagles 22nd in pass rating against when they don't pressure the opposing quarterback. So... An Eagles team that is, you know, how they've won in years past is being able to pressure the quarterback without blitzing. I mean, basically just rush for and get after him. Um, that has been that has not been the case this year, and mainly it's due to you know, Fletcher Cox hasn't really been the same guy. You've got some injuries, Malik Jackson, Tim Jernigan. They battled injuries along the defensive line. So what they're trying to do now is that, you know blitzing more frequently, much closer to the league average, which is pretty uncharacteristic. And in turn, it's having an adverse effect on the secondary, which has talent problems to begin with. Yeah. So um, when they don't apply pressure, they're just getting shredded. Uh, also, the Eagles 27th in pass rating against play action passes and 28th in pass rating against screens. So I do think there's a way here for Dallas that even if they don't have Amari Cooper um, and they, they have to more or less rely on a ragtag bunch of wide receivers, I think Tavon Austin was like their leading receiver yeah. last week. Um, I do think there's a way to get Zeke involved uh, in the passing game, you know, coming out of the backfield. If that offensive line's healthy, that, I can't stress that yeah. enough, mm-hmm. um, that I think there's a, a way here where they can uh, incorporate some screens, you know, use some play action, and ultimately beat them, uh, beat the Eagles down the field, which we've seen time and time again. So right. uh, I just think that the, the, the Cowboys have had offensive struggles, don't get me wrong, over the past few weeks. But I do, I do think a little bit of that as a product of them playing against uh, some good defense as well, Saints, the Packers, the Jets. Um, they've also, you know, they've been without the key players. So if they get that offensive line healthy, I like the Cowboys covering all. To your point, uh, the Eagles blitzed 16% of the time last year. That was lowest in the NFL, 27.7% this year. So, there you Interesting. Go. That's a good one. I'll good. take the Cowboys as well. Uh, again, a lot of that depends on Tyron Smith being healthy, offensive line being healthy. Uh, last week I came out and said I'm, I don't believe in the Eagles' rush defense, even though they allowed something like 3.2 yards per carry. They hadn't faced a team with a good running back yet. Last week, they placed the Vikings, and uh, combined, Madison and Cook had over 100 yards. That was the first time the Eagles had allowed more than 100 yards um, in a game this season. And I think that happens again this week, especially if that offensive line is healthy. Uh, again, Dallas, despite their struggles the last three weeks, still third in yards to play differential. They're playing good football. They're just playing against d- tough teams. Uh, it's out of the Jets are in the tough team, but hey, Sam Darnold. Yeah, we, we, had the, we all had the Jets going in the playoffs. With Sam Darnold healthy, yeah. and the Jets played to their potential last week. It's a different team when Luke Falk is their quarterback. <laughs> a classic trap game in hindsight. Yeah. yeah. And um, Philly, negative yards to play differential, 25th in the NFL. Secondary's been banged up. I, 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 think, I think they win this game, even despite all the injuries. Yeah, I don't have a whole, else, whole lot else to add. I'm also going to take Dallas. Uh, I guess the one thing I look at is uh, Philly's allowing 8.4 yards per attempt through the air. Uh, on the road, or no, yeah, sorry, 8.4 yards per attempt wow. uh, passing. That's third worst in the NFL. That's on the road. Only Atlanta and New York, the Giants have been worse. Uh, and I think Dak is second in air yards and fifth in average depth per target. So I think there's going to be some big play potential here, especially if Amari Cooper is able to give it a go. But even if he can't, it could be a big Michael Gallup night. Uh, also, Philly's just in a tough spot right now. In addition to the injuries, the schedule has been a bear for them. This is their second straight road game, fourth in the last five games. They got they have to go to Buffalo next week, so they're just in the middle of a, a whole bag of suck right now. And it's not not going to get a whole lot easier to, uh, Sunday night. So, 
I don't know. It's just the Cowboys. It, their offense has looked a little different, but I, I do think there's there's a little bit of an overreaction going on to their struggles. Yeah. yeah. We mentioned the competition. And also, I need you to look. They're still good on third down. They're still a good team in the red zone. Yep. Um, you mentioned the odds per play, and I, I thought that would have dropped significantly over the last three weeks, but it's still it's sixth in the NFL over the last three weeks, well, it's 6.2 yards per yeah, play. I, so, they, you know, they're still moving the ball here. Um, there's been a lot of dropped passes. So they that, haven't that, been that's forcing something, turnovers either. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. something, so like a dropped, like dropped passes, it, that tells me it's correctable. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not like there's these egregious to. mistakes. So um, <laughs> just I, just, <laughs> I just find their losing streak to be more of a matter of, a circumstance in some regards, whereas the Eagles hiccups are sort of personnel related. It yeah. could be long term issues. I had the Cowboys as 11 and a half point favorites in my yards per play yeah. line this week. Yeah. Like, that's, that's huge. Yeah. They, they, they only have, they, they, they have a negative turnover differential. Yeah, I was going to say it has to be turnovers. And penalties is probably. Pretty much even. Yeah. Anyway, locks and upsets. Andre, who's your lock? Patriots. Uh, they're what nine only nine point favorites against the Jets. Let's just rotate the Patriots as our lock every week. I have I know, how about season. next week we ban us ourselves <laughs> from picking the Patriots in a lock and upset? Uh, but I mean, it's just the running theme every week. They're playing all these inexperienced quarterbacks. Sam Darnold will be making his 16th start against the Patriots, and uh, I say this every week. Take a shot, everyone, because they say this every drinking game. Spread drinking yes, game. Yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> Patriots against quarterbacks with fewer than 20 games experience since 2016. 16 and 0 now with an 11 to 5, 11 and 5 against the spread record. Uh, and when you look at their schedule next week, they're going to play another quarterback with fewer than 20 games, uh, Baker Mayfield. And the week, after, the week that, after that, Lamar well, Jackson. Yeah. And further down the road, they're going to get Josh Allen again. Uh, and Bengals might make a switch by, by then to whoever the hell was their backup. <laughs> and it's like five, five quarterbacks they're going to face with it, no about the Patriots down the road. They've they already faced like five <laughs> already. And they, they don't have to play well to cover. No. No. And, and listen, the spread's nine points. They've allowed three touchdowns on defense this year. So, so assuming, assuming the they are, they're going to allow 10 points, can the Patriots score 20 points against the Jets? They've, yes, they can. They they've, will. They've played so many games. I'm not as confident in the Patriots as you are this week. I think the Jets' defense could give them some problems, uh, especially if Mosley's playing. But, like, it doesn't it hasn't mattered this year because their defense is so good where it's like they might even score a touchdown yeah, or at least exactly. give them yeah. at least give them free field, yardage. Yeah, exactly. Position, yeah. So. And there's such a, like there's so much of a track record there with them covering the spread. I mean, dating back seasons now. I know. Like they're just <laughs> so good against the spread and these they these spreads become inflated every week, yet they find a way to cover. So, yep. All right. I'm with you. Uh, my lock, I'm gonna go with the Rams three point favorites over the Falcons. Um, both teams in a bad place they right suck. now. Um so this is a matter of which team sucks less, I guess. Um, and I just think this is a good get-right spot for the Rams offense. I mean, he, he, they, they were piss poor last week, but they were going up against a 49ers <laughs> defense that I think we can agree on is pretty legit. Um, they're looking like Super Bowl contenders. Falcons defense, though, just absolutely horrendous. So there's a spot for Sean McVay to get that uh, Rams offense up and rolling, certainly this week. Uh, Dan Quinn seems like a dead man walking in Atlanta, so it's hard to imagine them playing inspired football. I will caution that the Falcons are much better at home than they are on the road. Um, so I guess that's one reason for pause. But, I mean, you look at the, the QB ratings uh, against the Falcons over the last four weeks. Uh, 128, 158.3, 130, <laughs> and 118.1. Those coming against Arizona, Houston, Tennessee, and Indianapolis. Did you say 158.3? Yeah, that's so you had perfect, a perfect quarterback yeah. rating. That was against Houston. Uh, Deshaun Watson's oh, right, five yeah. touchdown game, but so like you, you look at that collection of of stats, and sure, Deshaun Watson's among the elites when it comes to quarterbacks. But then you're also giving that up to last week, Kyler Murray, uh, Marcus Mariota had a good game mix in there, and he's on the verge of getting benched. Uh, in Indianapolis, so Jacoby Brissett, more of a, a game manager, I guess mm -hmm. you could argue than anything. So, uh, long story short, Falcons defense sucks. Give me the Rams. Uh, if we're going to start outlawing the Patriots, we might want to start outlawing going against the Dolphins. Yeah. But until that happens, I'll take Buffalo laying 17 points uh, at home against the Dolphins. Uh, Miami's bad, as we've all heard. I just want to point out, I found this on the Odd Shark database. This is the first time since, last week, though. Yeah, I know. <laughs> since 1992, the Buffalo has been a favorite of 17 points or more. Wow. Uh, guess who that was against? Dolphins? No. Patriots. Oh. Yeah. Weird. <laughs> it used to be a different world. Uh, they haven't been a two touchdown favorite since '93, and haven't been a ten point favorite since 2016 against the one in 15 Cleveland Browns. Dan Marino was quarterback. I don't know why I said Dolphins. Anyway, well, whatever. Uh, upset, Ricky. 
Uh, I'm gonna take the Cardinals. Uh, <laughs> I like that one. Yeah. Three you take points. the Cardinals every week. Uh, I was gonna do that too, but I, took, I think I took them last <laughs> three week. Three point though. underdogs uh, <laughs> against the Giants. Cardinals coming off back to back wins. Uh, granted, it's over the Bengals and the Falcons, who I just tore they're to shreds. They're not bad. Um, no, they're not bad. And in it's sh- the the back to back wins. You know, the Bengals and Falcons are bad, but so are the Giants. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Like this is still a, it's all one collection of crap. Um, so yeah, I, I think that you know. Cardinals especially show an ability to run the ball, uh, both Kyle Amari and just their running game in general. So uh, I do think they'll have some success against that Giants defense, which uh, stood strong a little bit against the Patriots. But overall, that like they're just weird. They're washed up in some areas and yeah. very young in other areas and just kind of a mess. I'm going to take the Chargers two point on their dogs over the Titans. Melvin Gordon just eight carries, 18 yards against the Steelers. You have to think that after two games under his belt now. He's going to eventually, you know, re- not regress, but progress to the mean, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can still regress, but yeah. I mean, uh, he, L.A. just never got the run going last week because all of a sudden they're down 14 nothing because of dumb turnovers. And Titans making a quarterback change. This is You predicted this, Ricky. Mm-hmm. Ryan Tannehill was going to come in. Is Tannehill in this week, or do we not know yet? No one knows yet, okay. but I don't think it matters. Titans' the, offensive the line is allowed the most sacks. push starts now. Yeah. Titans' offensive line is allowed the most sacks, and I think this is a coming out party for Bosa and Ingram, if Ingram plays. And Hunter Henry, first game back last week, yeah, 100 yards, eight catches. I think he'll uh, be a factor in this one. Okay. Uh, I'll take the Lions as one-point home dogs against Minnesota. Uh, I think this is similar to the Houston game earlier. I think there's going to be some overreaction to what people saw with Minnesota curb stomping the Eagles. Uh, obviously, you know, Detroit's on a short week as well, but I think the Lions have proved that they're a pretty decent team. They've had some bad luck here and there. Some of that is their own doing, but uh, I'll take uh, Detroit at home. Minnesota's kind of hard to pin down, so I think they're going to have a kind of up and down type of thing from week to week, and I don't like them going on the road feeling confident. So yeah. uh, I'll take the, the Lions to, to pull the slight upset. All right. Just hope for a well officiated week. Yes. Yeah. yeah that would be good. That's been a no s- concussion. Slight issue, but <laughs> that would be an upset. That would be the upset of the year. Yeah. So. Okay. All That's right. it. Anything else? No, I have nothing else to add. No baseball talk this week? <laughs> nah. Okay. Uh, you can we'll just want to get out. Yeah, we'll, get out. <laughs> we'll regroup before the World Series. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. All right. Uh, that's the spread. Nesson.com's football picks podcast. Uh, thanks for joining us. Come back next week and we'll do it again.